But we really do appreciate uh, Coach Tiffany Sardin, the head coach at Chicago State. She's a legendary Chicago player. She played for Coach Gators at Marshall High School and has gone on and has become an exceptional college basketball coach. She's taken over the reins at Chicago State. And you know, she's playing a very, very difficult schedule. So we really do appreciate uh, the, the, she, getting to play Chicago local basketball teams. We play Chicago State, we play Loyola. Normally we play Northwestern. So we do try to play our, our local Chicago teams here. And so for Chicago State to come up and play this game is, is much, much appreciated. That said, you know, Texas A&M is a, a top 15 opponent. And looking ahead to Friday, we are going to be playing number four or five Louisville in the Mohican Sun in the Jimmy V Women's Basketball Hall of Fame Classic. And I just want to make sure that, you know, that today's game is sandwiched between those two ranked opponents. So it was very, very important for our players to stay focused, understand that they're playing to the competitiveness within them and they're playing against the competitiveness of the Chicago State players. I thought our team did a really good job of respecting the Chicago State players today and, and you know, giving them the respect they deserved and have earned as, as athletes and then, you know, competed very hard today. Not close to being perfect. We have a lot, a lot of work to do to get uh, the details of being a good basketball team cleaned up. But I thought the competitiveness of our team was there and present and ready for today's, for today's challenge, looking ahead to what's on stake on Friday on national television. Uh, with that, I'm going to move over to the U.S. and players. This is later. Come on through. Hi. You can pull that. You can take it off. This is Sonia Morris. Um, we'll take the first question from um, Nathan Burleson. Um, hi. Um, so, uh, how how does it feel to, now that you have two games under your belt, how does it feel to get back into the swing of games after a long and um, kind of a weird off season? Um, I think it feels good as a team. We just, you know, kind of got, got to adjust back to the reps, back to the adversity, just back to playing against other competition other than ourselves. So it feels really good. And, you know, we're just getting better each practice, each game. So it's really helping us. Question from John Robleski from Global Traveler. Hi, Sonia. Congratulations on the win. How hard is it to play without any fans in attendance? It's really hard. Um, we got to bring our own energy, but I think that um, the approach this year is just very different, knowing that we won't have fans, so we just naturally eat bring our own individual and collective energy group. Thank you. Before the next question, before the next question, I just want to let the media know that the 128 points scored in today's game uh, set a new record for women's basketball. The old record was 124 points against Savannah State. So this is a new record for DePaul women's basketball. Okay, John, go ahead with your follow-up question. Oh, I didn't have any, sir. I was good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nathan, do you have a follow-up question for Sonia? Yeah, so um, in the first half alone, you guys had 38 points off of uh, 19 turnovers. Can you speak to your guys' ability to score quickly off of opponents' mistakes? Uh, yeah, that's just the Paul Ball, being able to convert um, the other team's mistakes and convert it into our own, you know, points, hopefully. I think that we just kept our focus really well, stayed composed, kept our poise, and we was able to convert their turnovers into points. Any, any follow-up questions, Nathan, for Nate, for, uh, for Sonia? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. John, any other follow-up questions for Sonia? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. We'll now uh, bring in Lexi Held. Thank you. And we'll begin the... Um, Questions with Nate Burleson from DePaulia. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, so after uh, Saturday's game, what were some of the things that you were looking to um, correct or adjust going into today's game? How do you think um, how do you think today's game went as far as that? 
Um, one of the biggest things was rebounding that we talked about and trying to stay clean on defense. Uh, I think we, we had a better uh, emphasis on rebounding this game, uh, but we definitely will do better on the, uh, them on the free throw aspect. But, A follow-up question for Nate? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. John Robleski from Global Trevor. Have you got a question for Lexi? Hi, Lexi. Congratulations on the win. Um, how do you feel about playing with a mask? Is it really difficult? Uh, I mean, it's not easy, but we've been doing this since August, so uh, we're, just, we're just getting used to it and just pretty much expecting it to be game one. And how do you feel about, well, obviously you would prefer to play in front of fans, but how, is it really difficult to play without the energy and the support of the fans? Yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, we knew coming into this season that that was probably going to be a factor that we didn't have. So we been trying to bring our own energy, kind of like Sonny said, in games, but also in practice. And how good is it after, after the long layoff, how good is it to actually be on the court and, and playing again? Uh, it feels great. I mean, the season's full of uncertainty, but just being able to have uh, a game on the ball and hopefully a good game on Friday is exciting. Thank you. Good luck. Any other questions for Lexi from the media? Nope. With that being said, thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Lexi. And we'll bring in. Uh, we'll bring in Coach Bruno. Let's begin with a, a question from uh, John Robleski from Global Traveler. Hi, Coach. I noticed on the schedule you're playing several games at Wintrust. I thought there was a limit on the number you could play there. Has that changed this year, or or am I mistaken? No, that was a, the the limit that we a lot we could play there. John was about the year that we hosted the NCAA regional. When you are hosting a regional, in order for us to be eligible to compete in that regional, we could only play three games. So that was that was a function of the fact that they all hosted the regional back in two thousand nineteen. There's no restrictions on how many games we can play. And, and athletic director Blake Peavy has said to me, and I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here, that he would like to see us play all of our games down here right now. So uh, I'm very happy to play here. This is a great arena, and um, it's a great opportunity for our players to play here. And, and I think everybody knows we have to play wherever DePaul administration tells us to play. Uh, and we, we love our home on Lincoln Park, but, but this is a special big arena and we're trying to take our program to another level. I think playing here every game makes a statement about that level that we're trying to get to. Thank you, coach. Nice win. Thank you. Question from Nate Burleson from the Paulia. Yeah. Hi coach. Um, can you speak to the play today of um, Kendall Holmes and how she's adjusted to college ball as a freshman? Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, the other day I was asking about Darion, and I talked about Kendall today. I'm asking about Kendall, and I probably would talk more about Darion. So we have two really talented freshmen. And, and what happens with freshmen is you can't just, you, you teach in practice, you teach, you teach, you teach, but they still have to experience the game live and in color and in person on the floor against real live flesh and blood competition. And so, you know, the other day against A&M, Kendall never got going. I mean, she had two quick fouls and we you know, tried in the second half and it was just too fast for her at that moment. So we, we gave her a quick hook and she only played about three minutes. I asked her in practice yesterday, when's the last time we played three minutes, only three minutes? She said, when I was a freshman in high school. So it's what happens to freshmen. And I just said, make sure you're ready. And, and, and she was ready and focused. And, and today, and Darion, and Darion Rogers is also a very talented freshman that was able to get more minutes both days but probably a little bit better game actually against a and than she did today. But that's that's going to be the up and down of freshmen. And what I what, what really good players do, and I really believe these two are, are very talented players, they learn from their mistakes and experiences that take place during the game. And I, I think they're both just going to get better, exponentially better as it goes along by just getting more and more playing time. So I'm excited for both of them. They're both truly – really talented um, freshmen. So it's just really um, good to see them develop. 
John, do you have a follow-up question for Coach Bruno? I do. Sorry, sorry, I forgot it last time. Coach, with with this large of a victory in the in, early in the season, how tough was it to balance keeping your starters in there to get them game ready versus uh, putting your reserves in to give them playing time? Well, I think that's always the truth, back and and you know, this game was scheduled. You know, we scheduled this game because at the beginning of the year we were we were scheduled to be in the Virgin Islands playing three really tough. Um, you know, BCS, you know, football five schools, three of them Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I just wanted to come home and get get everybody a, a good solid home game before we entered what was going to be the Big East, and we had some more meetings scheduling coming up the road here, and we meant actually the old schedule had taken place. So Chicago State again, it was it was, it was a game that was scheduled in this position on purpose so that we could. You'll have beat the heat of the, the top 15 opponent in AM, and then oh yeah, an opponent that's a strong Division One team, but not from the top 15 program. Yet. And then, and then, you know, so I, I just think it's important to try to get everybody playing time at this time of the year and still keep your players, your, your, your starters, in a, in a solid, constructive place. You know, Maya Stovall's been hurt for the whole preseason, so she's not at any preseason time. That's why she was in limited minutes on, on Saturday. We were able to get her. She had to start today, and, and we were able to get her some some minutes, to, some real minutes for the first time since she's been injured. We're also missing Kiara Dahlman, who could be one of our starting, uh, you know, starting center as one of our bigger inside interior people, and she's going to be out for a good while yet. And Jory Allen is a transfer from Indiana that we're still waiting a pending transfer waiver from the NCAA. So we're still missing. We were missing three actually on one, on Saturday night. We we're still missing two today, and so you still you, you want to get the players that are eligible to be playing time to your point, and then at the same time get the people that haven't played a lot or don't have a lot of college experience. Experience, I think we were able to do that today. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any other questions uh, from the media for Coach Bruno? John, any more follow-up questions? Oh, all good, sir. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, our next women's basketball game at home is Sunday against Xavier, uh, our Big East Conference opener. So we look forward to seeing the media at that game. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Sorry, Bob, to cut you off. I didn't mean to do that. But thanks, everybody, for covering women's sports. We really appreciate you covering the ball women's basketball.